Hi there, um, my name is Dr Justin Amory and I want to continue my series of about coronavirus, hoping for the best but preparing for the worst. And in this particular episode, we're going to look at the coronavirus um, and what it actually does to us, what it does to our bodies uh, as we get infected. So this episode is coronavirus, what will it do to my body? Um, so as I said, my name is Dr Justin Amory. I'm a GP or family practitioner working in Oxford in the UK. Um, I'm also a palliative care specialist, mainly in children, uh, but also with adults having worked both in the UK and in Uganda over the years. I'm sitting at home currently isolated with coronavirus, uh, fortunately uh, recovering after what was just a mild illness <clears throat> uh, and as it will be for most people just a mild illness. But I do know from uh, talking to people and contacts uh, as a doctor how frightened people are of this epidemic and for the vast majority of people there's no need to be frightened because it's just going to be a mild illness. But for some people, particularly the frail and elderly, uh, this illness could be severe and does have the uh, chance to end up in people dying. Um, and that's a very terrifying thought, particularly if you're living alone and without support. So the aim of these uh, videos is to provide comfort because there's a lot to be comforted about. Firstly, the coronavirus does not kill most people. Um, and if the worst comes to the worst and you do end up dying of coronavirus, I can guarantee that while it's not easy to talk about, just talking about it will make a huge difference because people's fears about death and dying are almost always much, much worse than the reality. So these videos are aimed at relieving the anxiety and to give comfort to those who are at high risk of dying. So the first question we want to ask ourselves is what does coronavirus actually do once it gets inside? So what does coronavirus do uh, to our bodies? Well, the first question is to understand is what does the immune system do? So if we look at how does our immune system actually work? Um, as, as you probably know, the coronavirus can't be treated by a drug as yet. We hope maybe there will be some drugs, but nothing immediately is available. One day we'll have a vaccination for it, like for other virus infections, but that's probably about a year away. So in the meantime, the thing we're all relying on to kill the virus is our own immune system. And our own immune system is an amazing thing. It can recognize all sorts of foreign bugs uh, and it can zap them, uh, usually within a week or two. And for the vast majority of people, that's what will happen. Um, fortunately for small children and younger children, this seems to be particularly the case with this bug. Um, so the most smallest and the most vulnerable in our society do seem to be being spared. But as we get older, uh, just as you know, joints are a bit stiff and your skin gets a bit wrinkly, um, your immune system also gets a bit more tired, particularly if you're unwell with other conditions. And therefore, immune systems tend to be a bit more sluggish to respond and as we get older or more frail. And if our immune system can't zap it straight away, um, the virus gets in through our mouth and our nose and, and our eyes, comes down our throats into our main airways where it tends to get stuck, <clears throat> causes, sorry, that wasn't a coincidence, a bit of a dry cough and a, uh, a bit of hoarseness, often a little bit of fever, not a great amount of mucus. I certainly got a kind of tightness across the chest and got quite breathless doing really quite mild things, but never, not in an unpleasant, frightening way. Uh, just when I was trying to run up, you know, when going backwards and forwards, it was a bit like uh, running, going for a jog. Everything was just that bit harder. If, if the coronavirus gets further down into the lungs, you can get a, what's called a pneumonia, which is a deep infection of the lungs. Uh, and, and if it gets worse still, as the immune system tries to attack the virus inside the lungs, the lungs can get a bit filled up with sort of sticky mucus and fluid as the immune system tries to fight back. And that's what makes it difficult for the oxygen to get into our bloodstreams, because it's the oxygen that we need to keep our brain and our heart, everything else functioning. Um, and at that point, uh, if we go down a vicious cycle, 
uh, everything stops working uh, and our heart and our lungs will give up as can some of our other organs. In terms of what the treatments are, fundamentally the treatment for coronavirus is your immune system. Your immune system 99% of the time will kill coronavirus. In high risk groups not quite so much but we'll talk about that in another video. There are some treatments that are people experimenting with like antiviral drugs but so far these are very experimental and not been too successful. So I think we all have to accept that during this particular epidemic the best thing we can do is give our immune systems the best chance of fighting the virus off for itself. So for everybody, whether we're young or old, it's a question of rest, it's a question of drinking plenty, it's a question of eating healthily, it's a question of not trying to do too much but doing enough to keep the rest of our bodies active. Taking paracetamol or something similar if we get aches or fevers, making sure we treat any underlying conditions healthily and asking your doctor if the symptoms seem to be getting a bit out of hand because there are other things that doctors can do to help you. Inside hospital that involves right up to intensive care and ventilation. Outside hospital it might be that if your bug isn't going away or you're getting worse or you're getting more breathless your doctor might be able to give you some other medicines to help the lungs uh, fight the bug a bit more carefully and, and also maybe some antibiotics because although the virus itself doesn't respond to antibiotics after a week or so you can get a secondary infection which is bacteria getting into the lungs and causing more trouble. Really big question that I think a lot of people are asking themselves is will I suffer? If the worst comes to the worst, if you can't fight off the coronavirus, if your lungs get infected and you stop being able to produce enough oxygen, what will happen is that you'll get increasingly drowsy and fall asleep. Not for no reason is pneumonia called the old man's friend and has been for many hundreds of years. I'm really praying and hoping that you don't die from coronavirus. I'm really praying and hoping I don't and that none of my family do. But if the worst comes to the worst, and remember we're talking about worst case planning here, if the worst comes to the worst, the worst that can happen is you'll get a bit breathless and feel a bit anxious. And both of those symptoms are very, very easy to treat from a palliative point of view. Just with some simple drugs, we can get on top of those. And actually what we're finding is a lot of people with coronavirus don't even get that breathless and don't even get that anxious. They just drift off into sleep um, and then get deeper and deeper into sleep and unconsciousness. So that's the worst that can happen if you get coronavirus. Just to remind you again, for the vast majority of people, that won't happen. Uh, for a small minority of people, that will happen. And you do have choices, which we'll go on to in another video. So that was a video about what the coronavirus does to your body. Please do watch the other videos in this series, which will talk about some facts and figures. We'll talk about how you can plan. We'll talk about death and dying. And we'll talk about how to talk to friends and relatives uh, or patients or clients about how to care plan. Remember what we're trying to do here is hope for the best and prepare for the worst. I hope for you everything does work out for the best, but let's stick together and prepare for the worst. Most importantly, please, please, please do share these videos with your family and your friends because this epidemic is moving fast and it's really important that we get this information out there as soon as possible so that people can A, be comforted uh, where they can be comforted, B, have the right information that they need and C, make the right choices for themselves. Thanks for watching and take care.